Hi, I'm Brian Schroff from Beyondware. In this video, I'll show you a couple different ways you can make parking lots to use as end conditions for your typical sections. By using our new click and drag method to place assets into your model, it's never been easier to build a parking lot in Beyond Typicals. Check it out. So a lot of times when I'm modeling typical sections, I'm focusing on my end conditions to make those look as realistic as possible. So if I've got uh, buildings or a ditch or retaining walls or a forest, I try to make those look as realistic as possible on the left and right just to bring a full context to the road improvement. One of the most common ones that I've been finding that I'm building are parking lots. Uh, so I'll show you a couple different ways to make those. First, I'll start with a really easy one, and that will be with a curb and a gutter. And then we're just gonna have a parking lane that is perpendicular to the model. So all we have to do is drop in a parking lane, widen that out to let's say 18 feet, rotate our static vehicles 90 degrees, and then adjust that spacing depending on how dense you want those to look. You can also play with the horizontal offset to get them closer to the curb, longitudinal offset to get them to uh, closer to the front edge of your model. So that's one real quick way to do it. If you wanted to fill that out even more, you could drop in some aisles here. So let's just get a couple of travel lanes. Well, we can knock these down to 10 feet in width. Change that speed real low to 10 miles an hour. And change the direction. We'll get rid of those stripes too. There you go. And if you wanted to mirror this, you could bring a duplicate parking lane over to the left, flip the rotation on those cars, and bring in another curb and gutter. And let's say this is a strip mall, we can go ahead and get a sidewalk there and a commercial building. So another type of parking lot that I want to show you can make is a little bit more complex. Um, instead of having our cars oriented perpendicularly, maybe we have a big retail store and we have rows and rows of parking where those cars are facing north-south along your alignment, kind of parallel to your lanes. Um, since we can't take this parking lane section and turn it 90 degrees, we basically have to create the pavement and then can use our click and drag asset placement feature to bring in some pavement striping and some parked cars and maybe some other elements to make that look more like one of those larger parking lots. So to get started, I'll remove some of these pieces of this parking lot section I built. I'll keep these end parking spaces and my outer drive aisles here to serve as the outer edge of my parking lot. Then to bring in some space for more parked cars, we can bring in some pavement for them. You'll see I'll use the shoulder section. Basically what I'm trying to do here is create a bunch of uh, sections at a consistent width so that I can align my parking spaces to those widths. So by bringing in a bunch of 10 foot wide shoulders, I get that same asphalt parking pavement and I have now created the line work for my parking spaces. Those parking spaces could be eight or nine feet wide, but I'll just use 10 for simplicity. So now that I've got my pavement, I'm going to start by establishing basically a center line for two rows of parking. Uh, where we would have two spaces aligned across from each other. I'll leave some space in the middle for the drive aisle between those parking lanes and then two more sets of parking spaces. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is bring in a nice long white stripe. I can do that by going to our assets menu, searching for stripe. And now we can click and drag that into our model. So I'll put one down here. Again, I want to leave some space right in the middle for an aisle. So I'll put one down here. And then we can adjust that by clicking on the section and then the asset that that section's tied to. You get that little Beyond Typicals icon to hover. And we can go to our asset placement dialog and start playing with some of these transforms. So here, I don't want to scale this in the Y direction because that's going to get really wide. I'll keep that scale at 1. 
I don't need a Z scale because I don't need it going up in elevation. So I'm going to expand the X scale here and you'll see it just makes it a nice longer white stripe. And then we can move that with our gizmo here and get that into place. Looks like maybe about a 3.7 will be good enough. And you can see we can eyeball that um, because our dry vial has that wear pattern of the asphalt. We can kind of see where the end of that uh, shoulder is right there. So I'll go ahead and make this again up there, and then we can start placing some vehicles and getting these into place. So now that I've brought in a couple of static vehicles, I will go ahead and turn these. I can use my gizmo here, or if I want that exact 180 degrees, I can type it into our section asset tool right there. Then we can use our tool to shift that into place. I can go ahead and rotate this one as well. We'll do zero degrees for the rotation. Looks like we've got plenty of room here for our drive aisle between those. So that does look about right. If anything, it looks like we might be able to tug this whole thing back. So I can go ahead and show you how quick that is to do. Now that I've got that oriented, you'll see I place those cars right in the middle of that 10 foot shoulder. Now I can start bringing in some stripes to put between those parking spaces on both of these parking aisles. Now I can rotate those stripes like so, and then scale those up again in the X direction to get those long enough to hold the car length there. Looks like two is a good factor, so we can type that in. Now we've got our framework for our parking lot. I can go ahead and bring in some more vehicles. There we go. And you'll notice I've left off this as uh, without parking or that outer stripe. I think what I want to do here is put a concrete end cap on these and maybe fill it up with some vegetation or light poles. Um, so we got a couple different ways we can do that. I know in our assets we have um, some sidewalk standards. I can go ahead and sort for those. So we do have some curved pieces of sidewalk we could use to create um, a radial end cap on either side of this and put a sidewalk square between them. But we also have some concrete medians that might be a little bit easier to use. So I'm going to go ahead and find those in our list. There we go. So you'll see we have this concrete median end cap. That's going to make this a lot quicker. I can go ahead and bring one into each end of this section. Might as well do it up here too. We've also got a concrete median piece that we can bring in. And after we rotate and scale and move these around, we'll be able to represent a concrete end cap to these parking aisles. There we go. So after moving some of these and scaling them, I noticed that putting in a zero for the Y location got them all in the same line and generally a consistent one and a half scale got all those elements to fit very closely together. So um, when you're trying to make things match with multiple assets, it's a really good idea to take a look at your location, rotation, and scale coordinates and your numbers here so that you can go ahead and match those. It'll make things line up a lot easier. So now that we've got those parking end caps, I'll show you we can do a few more things to make that look a little more realistic. Um, we can add a light pole there. So let's go ahead and bring in one of those. Search for street light. And let's go with this street light too. We can put that right down in the middle and we want to rotate that 180 degrees. So we'll put in negative 90. We can do the same thing up here. And if we want to see some greenery, we can bring in a couple of different elements here. Um, I think I can bring in some 3D grass and we'll line that up as best we can. Since our 3D grass is a rectangle, we'll probably just cover up this median part and leave these outer edges concrete.
There we go. So now you'll see that that 3D grass doesn't look terribly realistic, mostly because you can see it sitting on concrete. There is a couple things we can do with some of our more advanced sections. Um, we can bring in our earth section and size that to fit. It's a little bit different than using the 3D placed assets, but I'll show you, you can transform this in a similar fashion. So here we've got our earth layer, it's four feet wide, but that piece of earth right there operates independent from the width of that section. So if I bring this up, this time in the Y direction, I can raise that up and I'll show you, I can knock that width back down to zero. So there's no gap there, but I still have this earth section that I can use and transform it to fit right underneath that grass. So again, it operates a little bit differently. First, I can change this from gravel to earth. Then I can play with the external positioning. So I can move this to the left to get it over the top of that grass. And then I'm going to need two of these, but I can change the length of this object down here. That's similar to scaling a 3D object. And then I can change the longitudinal offset. So with a little bit of trial and error, I can get this earth to sit right underneath that grass, just over the top of that concrete. And that grass will start looking more realistic. And now that I've got one, I can go ahead and do that same earth layer, basically pull in another section and do that same transformation, but move that shorter length of the section up to our other island. Okay, now all we need to do is add a couple of bushes and then I think we got a pretty realistic looking parking lot. Finally, if you don't like that wear path on your drive vial in the asphalt pavement, you can go ahead and change that pavement to match the rest of your parking lot. And there you go. So you can see it's a little more effort than the other parking lot, but if it's a format you need to match, you can spend maybe 20, 30 minutes. This took me a little over 20 to do, and you can get a different format of a parking lot next to your project. As always, you can find out more at www.beyondware.com or feel free to reach out to me directly. My email is brian at beyondware.com. Thanks for watching.